Hello, my friends. It's um, Sunday, the 4th, right? It's August 4th, 2024. And today's going to be a little more impromptu of a talk. Uh, I'm not going to do a workbook lesson. This is the week of review. You start over with the first and you review five each day for the following 10 days. Um, I thought about doing that, diving in, backtracking, giving an opportunity here to talk about the workbook lessons. There's plenty of time to do that. Um, we can start anywhere we want in any meaningful workbook lesson, meaningful for us at any time. But I just thought I'd give something a little more off the cuff without really knowing exactly what I was going to say. However, I am thinking about forgiveness. Forgiveness has been something that I'm writing and writing and writing about. It seems to be a theme every day. I think it's because, as I mentioned um, a few times, there's um, there's a presence of fear in my life right now on whether or not I'm doing the right thing, if I'm heading in the right direction, if I'm pursuing the right path. Um, I'm not, it's been a while since I've had that amount of uh, doubt in my life. And I think that is what called me to dust off uh, my copy of A Course in Miracles. As I mentioned before, um, I got this copy that I've been working with, with now in the early 1990s. Um, I started reading about the course in the late 80s. I started uh, seriously practicing it in the 90s. And I started seriously putting it aside in the 90s as well. I would pick it up. I would start. I would put it aside. And that went on indefinitely. Um, I always felt that I was a student of the course. I couldn't say that I was a practitioner practitioner of the course. I just kept putting it aside. Because I was reading it from a ego-centric position. And the last thing the ego wants is to be diminished in any sense. So whenever I would be challenged, whenever it felt uh, difficult, instead of working through it, I would put it aside, figuring I'd come back to it a little bit later. And I always did come back to it a little bit later, but never, um, never quite enough. I made inroads, obviously, because that's why I kept coming back, as well as with my meditation and my yoga practice. Each time, each time I picked it up, I'd go a little bit deeper. However, it was in 2008 to 2009 when I sat down with the workbook and the text and said, this is it. I will make my way through no matter what, because things were pretty bad with a looming divorce, um, care, being a caretaker, caregiver, sorry, for my mother um, with Alzheimer's. My father had had a stroke. I future was uncertain quite a bit. And that's when the course called me and said, practice, live it, express it. And to the best of my ability, I did. I got through the workbook, I got through the text, and I laid it aside under the false assumption, as it turned out, that I was done. Well, now I had it. I went through the workbook, um, and it will work through me. And again, it did, to an extent. But it needs to be a practice, guys. It needs to be the practice because the ego will sneak back in right through the back door, sometimes right barging in the front door, making itself at home and saying, this is my position. This is my home. This is my bedroom. This is my living room. This is my house. I'm not leaving this time. It hadn't really left. It was just waiting. So we practice every day. And life is always going to give us the perfect occasion to practice something's always going to come up and we get that opportunity to forgive. I was not forgiving. I wasn't holding grudges, really. A few. There was a few things that had gone on that made me hold a grudge. But overall, um, through my work all those years, decades, um, I could forgive more easily. However, I didn't forgive in the moment when something was happening. Um, sometimes not even the same day, sometimes not even the same week or month. I'll be gracious with myself and say at least within the, at least within the same year. I like to think, but who knows. But again, the course was working through me. 
and again my meditation and again my yoga and i had some great great insights i had some very deep awakening experiences some to the point uh especially using douglas harding's the headless way experiments where man i thought i was baked done uh, and this was the awakening of awakenings and of course as robert saltzman the author of the ten thousand things says awakening never ends and here i am led right back to a course of miracles because things feel to be looming again a little fear a little apprehensive apprehension uh, not just because it's political season, but some changes in my life. And I find myself knowing I need to forgive. I need to forgive those fears. Because the fears are an illusion. Some like to argue that. If you're feeling it, how can it be an illusion? Just because you feel something doesn't mean it's real. We see it in a sense, I always like to use my desk as an example. My desk is solid. However, if I were to take it apart, there would be parts of a desk, not an actual desk. If I were to look at those parts under a very, very powerful microscope, I would see that it was just molecules and that those molecules were atoms and those atoms were particles and those particles were dancing in a vast amount of emptiness. Nothing. Nothing resembling a desk whatsoever. However, I still stub my toe on it on a weekly basis. So, there was the solidness of the desk right there. It can be an illusion, and it can hurt just like it's real. That's where forgiveness comes in. We forgive so that it no longer is seen as real. We might still experience it as real, but on a, on a deep level, on a cellular level, we know that it isn't. And we know. It's not wishful thinking. It's not uh, fanciful, new age, fake it till you make it type of thing. We know that according to the Course, nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Therein lies the peace of God. So if this desk can be, if its identity can be threatened by being taken apart, by being examined, it's got to be unreal. If it's unreal, it doesn't really exist. If I examine my fears, it's the same. Because let's say I would sit on the head and had no memory of the thing that I was fearful of. Would it still exist? Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. If it can be threatened in any way, by a bump on the head, by a very powerful microscope if they can be shown to not exist it doesn't exist that's what forgiveness does such so is free so the fear is still present the apprehension is still present but I just keep forgiving the illusion the projection and we'll see what happens Stay tuned, guys. Take care.